Where are all the VR suits? Despite the prevalence of VR suits in fiction, there's a surprising lack of them in discussions, news, and houses at the moment. As a weeb lord building their own VR suit, I find this situation incredibly disappointing. I mean, come on, this is the perfect excuse to get everyone in skin-tight neck outfits. In exploration of this cruel reality, I've learned quite a bit. That's why today, I want to address why I think it is that VR suits, despite having the ability to solve many of VR's bigger problems, are a rarity and will probably stay that way for a long time to come. Much to my filthy weeb trash chagrin. Hello Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. When you look at our current situation, VR suits are a logical step up from where we are today with regards to immersive technology. Sense-wise, we're only really presence level controlling our vision and our hearing. Touch is only kind of being stimulated by vibration motors in our controllers, while smell and taste are basically completely ignored by the mainstream VR headset makers. Keyword here, being mainstream, or you know, casuals. If you look at the more niche products meant for our elite, it's clear to see that there are plenty of companies making solutions for those of us who want more stimulation from our games. Feel Real made a VR mask for those who want to smell the full used anime girl pantsuit. Research labs are working on electrode arrays so you can taste virtual pizza. Anime girl bathwater. And we've got Tesla suits and Kiro coming in clutch for when virtual dreamers want to lose their virtual V cards. If your goal is to get more immersion right now, your upgrade path should be pretty clear. That being said, sensory immersion is only one part of the equation though, as VR is an interactive medium. You know, it has gameplay. Thankfully, VR suits have the potential to one-shot just about everything else in terms of tracking quality. With the way today's VR tracking systems work, the main components that track movements are called inertial measurement units and are present in both our headsets and controllers. They are both accurate and fast sensors and can be used for just about anything we want to track, which makes them perfect for suits. Building our not Evangelion plug suits using the same technologies as today's best systems just means that we'll go from virtualizing just our heads and hands like now to being able to use our whole bodies in VR. They'll be even more accurate too, since having more sensors and your full body in consideration will allow tracking algorithms to correct for any movements that can be blatantly beyond what your body should be doing. The benefits of suits are plain to see, and if you've been paying attention, you'll have noticed that I haven't talked about anything that isn't doable right now. Now, this isn't a Nerf gear or holodeck situation where we have to flip science the bird to make them work. This is available in labs and in store shelves right now. No waiting for technology to catch up required. If you're willing to do what it takes to make your own or gather the gear, you can have the ideal VR suit set up right now. Heck, I'm building one myself and I'm just an electromechanical technician. So what's the holdup on these things being everywhere already? Well, sad to say, but it's the same old issues that are holding up just about everything else in VR right now, actually. People are too lazy, everyone is broke, and there is a distinct lack of f**ks being given. No matter how you slice it, VR suits only worsen the inconvenience issues that face today's VR. Not everyone can have the space to accommodate a VR room in their mother's basement, and a VR suit isn't doing anything to solve that. It only makes things even more complicated, since every human body is different, and people are going to have to go through the extra effort of picking out suits of the right size, and then staying the right size, so that the suit isn't coming off or falling off. And again, before we can even get to the point where we have a market, we should probably address that 99% of people are too broke to buy all this stuff. It's easy to forget, but the elite of the PC master race, who own high-end gaming PCs capable of taking full advantage of this type of gear, are a rare breed. Sadly, even within that group, it's not unusual to need a few extra months of saving money to properly afford some of the better stuff. 
seeing as a whole lot of the suits will have to be made either to order, customizable, or coming in various size variations, manufacturing will very likely end up being pricey for a lot of the wearable gear. We've got people watching this who can't even afford Google Cardboard. How the hell are we expecting them to scrounge together a few thousand dollars for a well-tailored Tesla suit? Not that it matters if they do in the end though, since the final issue is one that affects all VR peripheral gamers regardless of their income level. Software compatibility. 99% of video games made in VR don't have built-in functionality for VR suits and peripherals. So even if you spend a ton of money building out a baller VR rig, you'll be lucky if a few dozen games support your hardware of choice. And that's if you buy something off the shelf. It should also be noted that the quality of the titles that do have support can vary wildly since there are no standards for how to handle things like VR haptics, smell, and taste. Not that there could be right now since we don't even have a standardized system for how these things should be built into every software application, which means any developer that wants to have support will have to add it for every single unique piece of VR suit technology that comes out. Everyone's gotta eat, and when you're a business, which game developers are, they can't prioritize developing for a niche peripheral without being somewhat sure that they're going to get enough sales out of the effort they put in to justify not just developing another Hentai. game. And this, of course, leads to the niche product death spiral, where devs don't make games because there aren't enough people buying, people see no games so they decide not to buy the hardware, and this reinforces developers' decisions to not make more games. It's enough trouble dealing with this for VR as it is, so it only makes sense that no one will be jumping at the prospect of working on an even smaller niche within that range. So it should be clear now that VR suits, despite their benefits, have some major issues to deal with before they have any chance of going mainstream. To be honest, I personally don't think there is a solution to that problem of them becoming mainstream, and thus don't expect that to happen anytime soon. As such, I expect that the only places where we'll be seeing fancy VR rigs will probably end up being specialized businesses like arcades, at military training camps, or in the hands of shameless degenerates like me who are willing to build their own games for their hardware. That being said, I do think that in the absence of progress for neural immersion systems in the consumer space, there is going to have to be some better gear available in the future, since there is at the very least somewhat of a market for the better technology. The good thing for VR suits though, is that the technologies that are often used in them are offshoots of the technologies used in other products. Haptics are being improved for smartphones, smell technology by air freshener companies, taste technology by every food company under the sun, and suit tech by all clothing manufacturers. As things get smaller, more efficient, and more effective, I wouldn't even be too surprised if we got something like VR clothes at some point in the future. Another benefit of being able to feed off the growth of other technology categories here is that the technology that would otherwise have to be made custom for the suits can be obtained and repurposed from mass production lines for other products. The VR we have available today is only possible right now because smartphones encourage rapid development of small, high quality displays, cameras, and motion sensors. Heck, you can literally turn your smartphone into a VR display. That is how intertwined these technologies can be. While it may be a while before proper mass production facilities dedicated just for VR suits and clothes become a norm, the time when that does happen can be imagined and that era should bring with it more affordable prices for better VR experiences in the process. Just as a low demand for hardware leads to lower supplies of software, having more people with VR suits mean there should be more people willing to develop VR software that takes advantage of them. With that increased demand, we should hopefully start seeing VR companies start to collaborate and come together to at the very least establish standard protocols, APIs, and systems so that VR hardware developers only need to worry about designing their hardware well and software developers can safely assume that their products will work with any hardware. This isn't an issue with no solution, but it is one that demands that the market infrastructure meet the right conditions. When those right conditions will come is anyone's guess. 
I literally went to college so I could learn what I need to know to build my own solution because of how little faith I have that this will be a normal thing anytime in the next few decades. Doesn't mean that's what you have to do, but all we can do right now is figure out what balance of all the prior factors is worth it for ourselves. It may be decades before everyone has a VR setup with a suit and everything, but at the very least, you can rest assured that if you have the money, dedication, and patience now, you can get your own VR suits or setups to tide you over while everyone catches up. I for one can't wait to finish my full body VR suit and explore what the assets procured by the Miku Miku Dance and Source Filmmaker communities can provide. Thank you very much for watching this video everyone. Be sure to rate, comment, share, and subscribe so YouTube Algorithm Sama knows to bring you back here for more. Till next time, my fellow adventurers and dreamers. This has been Gregory, logging out.